Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV, Babad Bagede Imo TV. I am Mori Rerebila Lawal. First are the major headlines. Buhari's refusal to obey Supreme Court's order could spark crisis. Kano State Governor vows to destroy banks refusing all narrow north. Governor Umayi bows to court order, disband Ebubi Agu, investigate bank managers over scarcity of new narrow notes, Jigawa resident cries out. Over 5,000 illegal refineries discovered in eight years. Bank workers may begin strike on Monday. Suspected female gun runner arrested in Zamfara. Lastly, on sports, Senegal can't stop flying egos at the Nations Cup coming up soon. Now, the news and details. Festus Kiyamo, spokesman of the Bola Tinubu Presidential Campaign Council, says President Mohamed Buhari was inciting anarchy and coup d'etat with his flagrant disobedience to Supreme Court order on the old narrow north. Mr. Kiyamo on Friday gave his odd stake in a childish television interview where he asserted the president's defiance to allow the old bank notes to circulate alongside the redesigned north as ordered by the apex court was an open invitation to revolutional intervention. By virtue of our constitution, all authorities in Nigeria must obey the orders of the Supreme Court. Anything to the contrary is a descent to anarchy, stressed Mr. Kiyamo in an interview. The day we begin to disobey the order of the Supreme Court that is an invitation to a revolutionary intervention or other kind of intervention in our own democracy, he added. The APC campaign mouthpiece insisted Mr. Buhari was under an obligation to obey the Supreme Court like other public servants, including Kaduna Governor Nasser Erofai, Ogun Dako Abiodun, and other APC governors who have sworn to follow the highest court's verdicts. Moving on to the next story, Kadu State's Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji has issued a stern warning to commercial banks operating in the state threatening to destroy any bank that refuses to accept the old 500 Naira and 1000 Naira North. The governor gave the word of caution on Friday during his inspection of palliative meant for distribution to the citizens to cushion the effects of the hardship caused by the cashless policy. Any bank that refuses to accept old 500 Naira and 1000 Naira North will be destroyed. We will not tolerate such disobedience from any financial institution operating within our jurisdiction, he said. Governor Ganduji further disclosed that the space of the destroyed banks would be used for building schools. We will convert the space of the destroyed banks into schools that will provide quality education for our children. Moving on to Southeast, Ebony State Governor David Umayi has given in to a court order disbanding the Southeast Security Outfit code name Ibubi Agu. The governor, who doubles as the chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum, Humbly agreed that the security outfit will no longer function in the state. However, Governor Umayi disclosed that a legal framework already before the Ebony state, state House of Assembly for the establishment of two local security outfits has been passed into law to replace the disbanded Ebony Agu in the state. A federal high court sitting in Abataliki, the Ebony state capital, and on Tuesday disbanded the Ebony Agu security outfit in the state over allegations bothering on several human rights abuses, extortion, illegal arrest, and use of firearms by the security outfits. Still on the Economic Financial Crimes Commission, Jigawa State residents have asked the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to monitor the activities of commercial banks, managers, over the persistent scarcity of the new neural note in the state. Some of the commercial banks' customers who spoke with Daily Post made the call while commenting on the scarcity of new narrow notes in the state. They accused the bank managers of allegedly holding the new narrow note this board by the Central Bank of Nigeria and inviting it into politicians and other individuals. Daily Post reported that 
Scarcity of the new Nero notes in Jigawa State have continued to cause hardship to foreign Nigerians, forcing traders and POS operators to shut down their businesses. Malam Ibrahim, a bank customer in Dutse, alleged that the amount of new Nero notes in circulation is less than the amount released by the Central Bank of Nigeria to the banks. And to the next story. The industrial action the nation lands is owing to attacks on banks' workers by depositors of the old 1,000 Naira, 500 Naira, and 200 Naira note. The Association of Senior Staff of Banks, Insurance, and Financial Institution directed bankers to stay away in any state where banks are attacked by depositors owing to cash scarcity. The action will continue daily until normalcy is restored, according to the president of the association, Comrade Olusoji Oluwale. Moving on to the next story from Zamfara State. The Zamfara State Police Command has arrested a suspected female gun runner for allegedly supplying arms and ammunition to bandits. The news agency of Nigeria NAN report that an arm also recovered two, three, five, and three, two, five live ammunition of AK-47 rifles from her. It had also succeeded in the arrest of other suspects for alleged possession of 1,000 registered MTM SIMPAX. Other suspects for alleged possession of 1,000 registered MTN SIMPAX. The command's public relations officer, SP Mohammed Shevu, disclosed this in a statement issued in Guso. Shevu said that the suspected gun runner Fatima Sandy, 35 years old, was arrested following an intelligence report over an alleged supply of arms and ammunition to bandits in the state from Lafayette Town in Nasara State. He said on 13th February, police detectives arrested the suspect female gun runner in possession of 325 rounds of live ammunition. The arrest followed intelligence information obtained about a movement with the said exhibit from Latvia in Nasara State to a notorious bandit kingpin operating in Zamfara Forest. In the course of interrogation, the suspect confessed that she has been into the business for a longer time. Moving on to the next story. Gunmen have again attacked the Ogidi Police Area Command in Indemili North, local government area of Anambra State, killing three policemen in the process. It was the second time in five days the hoodlums attacked the station. During the first attack, one of the gunmen was killed and the policemen on duty were able to derive and drive them away. The time they succeeded in causing colossal damage by burning the building and destroying other valuable items in the area command. The police state's public relations officer, Tochuku Ikenga, who confirmed Saturday's attack, said the level of destruction was still being assessed. Ikenga said the hoodlums started shooting sporadically on approaching the area command and threw IEDs and patrol bombs gaining entrance. Unfortunately, the building is the police facility were affected. To another story. That's coming from the foreign. Some lawmakers in the United States have asked President Joe Biden's administration to rescind the nearly and one billion US dollar helicopter sale to Nigeria over allegations of forced abortion committed by the nation's security forces. Mr. Biden had in 2022 approved the sale of the 12 Viper attack helicopters to the President Mohammed Buhari led regime. The military aircraft was aimed at helping fight insurgency and promote security in Nigeria, one of Africa's most populous countries. But the U.S. Congress delayed the sale of the helicopter after raising concerns about the Nigeria Army's non-commitment to protecting civilians as it battles Boko Haram insurgent in the Northeast. Chris Smith, a congressman, attacked the Nigerian military, nothing that the armed forces had a consistent record of abuses and that has passed aid had done little to boost security. Therefore, we believe continuing to move forward with the nearly one billion US dollar arms sale would be highly inappropriate and we ought the administration to resign it, he told Mr. Biden in a letter this week. Concluding the world news is the sports story. Former Super Eagles winger Tijani Wabangida says he is optimistic the Flying Eagles will overcome Senegal in their opening match of the Under-23 on the 20 Africa Cup of Nations. 
Nigeria, who are in Group A with Senegal, Egypt, and Mozambique, will start their campaign on Sunday with Senegal, become and the full second game against all Egypt until next Tuesday. The 2015 champion will trade tackles with Mozambique on the 25th of February 2023 in their last group game. However, in the chat with ComplaceSport.com, the Atlanta Olympic gold medalist stated that the team have the firepower to down Senegal on Sunday. I have so much confidence with the current Super Eagles players. There is an array of quality players in that team that can wreck any opponent at the tournament. That ends the world news from BGI TV. Before we go, some major headlines. Buhari's refusal to obey Supreme Court order could spark crisis in Nigeria. Kano State Governor vows to destroy banks refusing on Old Narrow North. Governor Umayi vows to court order disbands a Bobi Agu. We also brought to you investigate bank managers over scarcity of New Narrow North. Jigawa resident cries out. Finally, on sports. 2023 or the 20 Afghan Senegal can't stop flying eagles from winning the cup tournament. For more updates on YouTube, our handle is Babagwagede Imo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. Select option all to access our broadcast on Facebook. Bagede Imo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page on Instagram. Bagede Imo underscore 22. For other placement of your goods, services, coverage of events and functions. Please dial the phone number streaming on the screen for advert placement only. Thank you for watching. I am Mori Rebila Lawal. Happy weekend. Oh, na -na -na. If you want to know what's going on in city, or you want to listen to the latest news and the gist, no stress, oh, just listen to BGI TV. BGI TV. You're one in a million.